This is what I hope will be a quick video to show a solution I've come up with when working with vintage Heathkit test equipment. It may also apply to their audio equipment, ham equipment, and other things, but it's primarily the test equipment. You end up with a lot of these knobs, and there's various styles, but they all have one thing in common. They use this, I think, fairly uniquely Heathkit approach um, where there's this, I don't know if it's fiber reinforced or whatever it is, but it's a plug that goes over the slotted shaft, or not slotted, but flatted shaft on uh, selector switches. And then that presses into an opening in the back of the actual knob. And again, this part changes in style, but internally it's all the same. And then they always have a uh, an insert of some sort at the end. Uh, usually it's a brushed aluminum, but sometimes it's some other material depending on the style. So what usually happens with these is you'll have a broken knob, it's cracked, and if it's just a hairline crack it can be fixed by wicking some CA glue into it and then uh, curing it and that can often make it strong enough to take the expansion pressure of this thing being driven into it. But the trick is how do you get this out in the first place to do any restoration on the knob and sometimes you steal the knobs off of a different Heathkit model to fix one you're working on and because the position of these inserts is uh, different from knob to knob in order for the pointer on the knob to line up with the uh, graphics on the front of the device, there's a good chance it won't line up and it's you would need to pull this out and reorient it and they're really in there tight and it's hard to get a grip on them, almost impossible really. Um, I've tried making some steel hooks that go down through the middle and then hook under the bottom edge and lift out, but those uh, rarely worked. The other thing that happens is there is a little uh, flat leaf spring that goes in uh, right here and it bows up a little bit to make a tighter spring fit on the uh, flatted shaft. So this is the solution I've come up with here to restore these things. To get them out, I drill a, I believe it's a number 43 drill, centered in that area all the way through, or, or almost all the way through, and then run a 440 tap into the hole. Again, it doesn't have to go all the way through, and sometimes you don't want it to because there's a chance then of the drill or the tap poking into the the insert and doing damage to it and you don't need to go all the way through you know three quarters of the way through would be enough and then uh, you take the you still have the tap sticking out of the hole you run it in there to create the the tap in the uh, the hole you may remove the tap from the drill or whatever or the tap handle that you're using to drive it through and then you get yourself a piece of something like quarter inch plywood with a uh, hole like this and clamp it in a vise or nail it to a table or whatever you want to do and then reinsert the tap that's now sticking through the hole into a chuck of a drill or your tap handle and tighten it down really good and then just pull and the wood will support the knob so it won't break and this insert just pops out pretty as you please and there's no damage and the hole's not big enough to cause a structural deficit uh, or defect on these inserts and then you can press them in in a different position or into a different knob or whatever. Now as for replacing broken or missing leaf springs in these inserts uh, they're typically about 0 0.012 inches thick. And I had just, I do enough of the Heathkit restorations that I bought a strip of uh, metal in that thickness. It's steel. And it's really shim stock. But it's thin enough I can cut it with a scissors, just a regular pair of scissors, uh, and cut it to shape. 
and then you can see here where there's a uh, a bit of a bow they bow from one end to the other and that's easy enough to press that by just bending it over a pencil or a drill or something like that and the other thing that you don't absolutely have to do but you can cut out these little notches this end here should stick through this part and the tab should stick out this end here and it's uh, sized to go into that little groove right at the top so you want to get that dimension correctly that kind of helps hold it in position and uh, then you just stick it in there and it should be like new and now you can push this onto the shaft of the switch put the knob in the right position to line up with the graphics and then push it on driving this part back into this part until it won't go anymore and now you've got a a knob properly assembled onto the switch shaft hope this is useful